Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here making a quick video for another CDX repaired. I have given life onto thee. And uh, this was in special thanks to someone named Blake uh, from New Hampshire, I believe. Very nice guy. Actually sold me this um, motherboard right here and gave me a bunch of other parts for free because he was uh, impressed, I guess, that I could fix this motherboard. Really nice guy, and it was cool. It's like there's nice people in the world that don't just want to make a buck all the time. And, uh, yeah, so I figured I'd make this video showing what I repaired. I've been doing that lately. Um, I am planning on making a very detailed, very thorough Sega Genesis and CDX, uh, sort of the definitive repair guide on my website. Uh, if you're at all interested in that, I would love to hear from you. I could use some encouragement because it's going to be a lot of work to do that. And I don't get paid anything to do that kind of stuff. It's just for the love. So if anybody wants to like be like, yeah, I'd love to see that, you know, give me a holler because I've got a lot of documents and a lot of stuff I've been compiling for it, a lot of pictures and videos. I got so much stuff on how to repair these systems now that I really want to share it with the world. It's just, you know, got to pay rent and I'm tired and it's hard to find the time to do all of it, but I'd love to make it. So um, this is another repair, though, that I'll talk about real quick just to show you some of the stuff I'm able to do now, which is cool. Um this uh, system had a bunch of leaking capacitors and one of them had leaked quite badly over here and there's actually two vias over here uh, one of them's an internal via though so you can't actually trace it out and that's what's hard about this board it's a four ply motherboard and you can't trace stuff out so the only thing that you can really identify this as a fix is this one wire and because of that internal via rotting away from the leaking electrolyte um, you know, I wasn't getting power to a large part portion of the board. Uh, that portion of the board turns out to be the uh, video circuitry. So that via actually is a is a power bus to uh, this resistor here, which goes to this capacitor here, and that's for the uh, that's for the Yamaha uh, sound power. And that that Yamaha chip is integrated into the three one five five six six zero by Sega. And so that's the power input for that. It goes through a resistor, kind of like an RC network to do a little bit of filtering. I don't know if it does that much, but that's what they did. Uh, and then you have uh, that rail also going to this, I believe this is a 100 microfarad capacitor for the chroma encoder analog video output stage. And that's an MB3514. Uh, and so obviously if you don't have power to those, you're going to have problems. And uh, yeah, then you also, of course, have power going to the uh, AV jack from this pin here, that's used to power the RF adapter. Uh, so that's important to make sure you can get five volts there. If you don't get five volts on, uh, sorry, it's this pin right here, and you can actually see the test point, which is this guy right here. If you don't get five volts there, that's something to look into as well. If somebody plugged in like a bad RF adapter or did something stupid at the AV jack, uh, you can blow out your analog video power circuitry. Uh, what else do we have to fix here? Um, I had to fix a trace here, and I do see these get damaged sometimes. Um, this is a composite video signal it goes right in here, and you'll see there's a little bit of extra solder, and that's because there I had to patch this trace going here. This whole jack had actually gotten pretty banged up and cut up. Um, this remaining line here is actually uh, the PCB substrate. It's been cut away so much that you can just see the, the internal material there. Um, or I guess that's the uh, the solder mask uh, has been cut away. So you see the internal substrate. Um, what else can I say about this? I had to fix that. I think uh, there were some parts along the uh, analog encoder stage I also had to take a look at. Oh, that's right. And the one real nasty problem this had was there was a short on these two pins, I believe it was. A little speck of solder shorting out the Z80. Because once I got power back in this whole thing, I actually didn't get past TMSS, which is the producer license screen. If you don't get past TMSS, odds are your Z80 is going to be the culprit. TMSS, I've noticed, has it will come up if your 68K and your ASIC are fine. There's other things to check before that. But if you can't get past TMSS or you don't get audio in both the FM channels and the PSG, then your Z80 is a good thing to check next. So far, I haven't seen the Z80 RAM fail, though I guess that's something that could happen too. And there's a wait signal that Z80 has. It's an active low signal, and the ASIC will trigger that signal if there's any problem with the Z80. So that's a good signal to check. Anyway, all this kind of stuff I could put into a really nice guide, a really cool how-to. 
Um, you know, if anybody's interested in that, like I said, please give me a holler, let me know. Cause that'll be a lot of work, but I have, I have all the stuff to do it. I'm just, uh, not feeling super motivated all the time. I'm super tired and overworked. Uh, what else can I say while I'm in here? Uh, these two wires in some models are uh, ex additional grounding wires going to the daughter board. And those aren't super necessary. I'm not sure why they're there. I think um, possibly interference, but more likely for heat sinking. Uh, this unit does get pretty hot, but only when playing Sega CD games. It stays nice and cool when you play Genesis stuff. But uh, don't be fooled about all the copper and, and metal plate, that the bottom metal plate. It actually does get used. Um, it may seem overkill, but it's actually not. Now you'll see that I put some Kapton tape here and here and a little over here. And I put some on the other side too, over the, the MB, uh, what is it? One, three, oh, I'm not even gonna say the part number. I don't remember it off, offhand right now. But basically that's for the uh, all the circuitry that's live all the time from this battery. Um, this is a rechargeable battery and it's a, you know, a 3.6 volt, something like that. Um, these are well documented. You can find these now for replacements, which is nice. But you want to put this tape here because you can um, obviously short something out when you're working on this. You can remove the battery as well, but then you got to reformat the RAM and all that. Never actually broken anything by leaving the battery in. That said, you know, something to be aware of. But if you're going to work on this ever, you should just, or just permanently just put some tape on whatever it doesn't hurt um, I also do highly recommend putting tape on the a6 on the other side near the cart slot because unlike pretty much every other model of a Genesis those high pitch density 0.5 uh, millimeter pitch density ASIC chips those QFPs 208 pins a piece uh, are very easy to get shorts and dust and other crap in between the pins, stuff that can cause a short. And because they're near the cart slot, your cart slot is your most sensitive area for getting contaminants into the system. So I do recommend putting some nice Kapton tape or some kind of tape over the, the edge of those ASICs running along that side of the board. Aside from that, your typical recaps, of course, though I generally don't see capacitors fail in these. Uh, the ones you really want to start out with are the power supply caps, because this is a whole DC to DC converter. So those are doing a lot of charging and discharging over the over the lifespan. And those are pretty easy. They're, they're 470, 470 microfarads. Uh, there's a 16 volt one here and a couple uh, lower voltage ones for the 5 volt rail. I think they're rated at 10, but you should be able to get away with 6.3. There's no reason you can't, um, you know, word of caution, of course, at your own risk and blah, blah, blah. And this is the uh, DC to DC converter, the step up converter right here. I'd love to actually um, reverse engineer that whole thing one of these days, but I actually haven't had one break in a long time. So maybe uh, it's not a priority right now. Uh, other than that, I did have one system where I replaced all the tantalums here. You don't have to, but those are um, one microfarad tantalums. I haven't seen those fail yet, but you never know depending on how crazy you want to be because this is the greatest video game system ever made ever made. I love the CDX so much. Uh, this is your video RAM chip, by the way. Uh, I see, I've seen one of those fail before. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'll make more videos about this stuff um, if people are interested. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. So thanks again to Blake. Uh, you're awesome. I super appreciate this. And uh, this one is, is working again. Yay! This is Sega Sonic Fan. Signing out.